Women benefit more from exercise than men. It has long been known that physical activity has a positive impact on health. However, men and women do not obtain the same benefits with the same level of exercise. According to a new study, men need to exercise longer to achieve the same effect as women. Regular physical activity brings many benefits to our well-being and body health. Exercise can improve the quality of sleep, lower blood pressure and cholesterol, and be helpful in dealing with emotional difficulties such as stress, anxiety and symptoms of depression. More on this topic in the text, physical activity benefits your mental health. They can even increase the size of areas in the brain responsible for memory and learning abilities. More in the text, regular exercise has been associated with larger brain volume. However, as it turns out, physical activity does not affect women and men to the same extent. Women can get the same cardiovascular benefits by exercising for less time than men, according to a new study. The results and description of the research were published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. According to Dr. Martha Gullarty, co-author of the paper, the beauty of the study is that it shows how women can maximize every minute of moderate to vigorous physical activity compared to men. According to the UK National Health Service, people aged 19 to 64 should do at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise per week. The recommendations also indicate the need to perform strength exercises to strengthen muscles at least twice a week. However, new research has shown that men and women do not obtain the same body benefits from the same level of physical activity. Our study does not suggest that women should exercise less, but rather encourages women who, for various reasons, do not exercise enough, that even a relatively small amount of exercise can have significant benefits, said Dr. Hong Wei Ji, co-author of the study. In their work, scientists analyzed data on the health of 412,413 adults. These data covered the period from 1997 to 2019. During the study, 39,935 people died, including 11,670 from cardiovascular diseases. During the study, the participants took part in surveys about their health, which included questions related to the exercises they performed. The results showed that men were more likely to engage in regular physical activity and strengthening exercises. Scientists in the study focused on assessing the risk of premature death, including death from cardiovascular diseases. Although exercise reduced this risk in both men and women, the benefits of exercise were greater for women. The team found, among other things, that 140 minutes of moderate exercise per week reduced the risk of premature death in women by 18%, compared to women who gave up any activity. Men, on the other hand, needed 300 minutes of such exercise per week to achieve a similar effect. Scientists have also examined the gender difference in strength training. They observed that men achieved maximum benefit by performing three sessions of muscle strengthening exercises per week, but women achieved the same level with only one session per week. Among the men surveyed, the risk of death from cardiovascular diseases decreased by 11%.
in men who regularly engage in muscle strengthening exercises. In the case of women, this reduction was 30%. Although women appear to be less likely to exercise in their free time, they are much less likely to die if they exercise any amount. This isn't too surprising, given that such analyzes cannot take into account the fact that women's physical effort for a given physical task is greater than that of men, said Emmanuel Starmatikis of the University of Sydney, who was not involved in this research. Starmatikis added that the gender differences are likely influenced by different skeletal muscle properties in men and women potentially explaining different responses to the same doses of exercise. Scientists involved in the study also stressed that physiological differences between men's and women's bodies may explain the observed discrepancies in results. Men have wider airways, proportionally larger hearts, greater lung diffusion capacity, and larger muscle fibers compared to women. The researchers emphasize that their study is observational, which means that a causal relationship cannot be established. The team also noted that the study is based on exercise and the amount of exercise reported by patients themselves and does not take into account physical activity related to household chores or gardening. Odysseus landed on the moon. Intuitive Machines Success. Intuitive Machines Odysseus lander on February 23 on the lunar surface. The American company made history as the first to successfully place a lander on the Silver Globe, near its South Pole. Odysseus took off on February 15 from Cape Canaveral in Florida. The launch was carried out as part of the Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLPS, program, which is addressed to private companies and aims to develop technologies needed to land on the Silver Globe. The intention of CLPS is to stimulate the development of the private space sector in the U.S. The use of commercial opportunities, as Jim Bridenstein, then NASA administrator, said during the presentation of the program, is to enable more frequent and inexpensive access to the lunar surface. This program is also part of the trend towards public-private partnerships for space exploration. Intuitive Machines received a contract from NASA to place six scientific instruments on the lunar surface. On February 23, Odysseus was confirmed to have landed in the Malapata impact crater, approximately 300 kilometers from the Moon's south pole. We can confirm without a doubt that our equipment is on the lunar surface, said company CEO Tim Crane. The United States return to the moon, added Bill Nelson, NASA administrator. This is the first successful American landing on the moon since 1972. The IM-1 Intuitive Machines 1. Mission is the first mission carried out by Intuitive Machines. The company was founded in 2013 and was selected by NASA for the CLPS program as one of nine companies. Intuitive Machines Feet is also the first successful landing under CLPS. The landing was not without problems. Mission controllers had to deal with a failure of the laser rangefinders, which could have hampered the efforts of intuitive machines engineers. Odysseus's lasers used to calculate the ship's speed and altitude were not working properly. Mission engineers had to submit a software patch that harnessed lasers from a NASA-supplied science instrument to aid in the landing. 
Now Odysseus has seven days to carry out his planned experiments. He must hurry before the moonlit night arrives, when the sun's rays will no longer reach the Malaparte crater. The M1 mission is the second mission launched as part of the CLPS program. The first one, carried out by Astrobotic, with the Peregrine lander, which was to land on the lunar surface, was launched on January 8. This was the debut flight of the new Vulcan Centaur rocket, developed by United Launch Alliance. The rocket operated flawlessly, but shortly after launch, flight controllers began reporting anomalies in the lander. The first sign of a problem was that the ship was unable to change its orientation in space to point its solar panels towards the sun. As a result, mission managers directed Peregrine back to Earth. After 10 days in space, the lander will burn up in the atmosphere. Previously, private companies from Israel and Japan also attempted to land on the Silver Globe. Both ended in failure. Odysseus is a 4 meter high and 1.5 meter wide hexagonal cylinder. It carries six scientific instruments provided by NASA. Among them is a device designed to examine the interaction of exhaust gases from the engines of the landing Odysseus with the plumes of lunar dust raised above the surface of the moon during landing. There is also technology on board to improve navigation on and around the moon. There are also facilities to conduct a radio astronomy experiment, which aims to measure the sources of radio noise from across the solar system. This will help scientists design future astronomical observatories that can be placed on the far side of the moon shielded from man-made electromagnetic noise. Odysseus also has lidar technology on board, which helped with the landing maneuver. There are also measurement devices for electron plasma and a small radio navigation beacon that will demonstrate autonomous spacecraft positioning technology and could help future lunar landers and rovers and eventually become part of a larger GPS-like system on and around the moon. Odysseus also transports several commercial loads for various clients, including Columbia Sportswear, which will test its Omni-Heat Infinity insulating material. Other private cargo includes a set of sculptures by artist Jeff Koons, Intuitive Machine already has plans for further lunar missions, which are scheduled to launch later this year. Testicles grown in the laboratory. Israeli scientists managed to grow mouse testicular organoids in the laboratory. These models, although murine, may increase knowledge about testicular development and function and provide clues that will aid in the treatment of infertility. Organoids are miniature versions of various organs grown in the laboratory from stem cells. They retain key anatomical features of full-size organs. They act as three-dimensional models and are extremely helpful in research where the use of living organs, brains or kidneys, is impossible or unethical. Organoids created in the laboratory are used to test reactions to drugs or to observe development in unfavorable conditions. Research on organoids gives scientists the opportunity to thoroughly study the organs and understand the causes of many diseases. In the new work, scientists from Bar Ilan University in Israel grew mouse testicular organoids in their laboratories. Such miniature testicles may contribute to progress in research on fertility and sexual development disorders.
The description and results of the research were published in the International Journal of Biological Sciences. The testicle is responsible for producing sperm and sex hormones such as testosterone. Abnormalities in the development and functioning of the testicles may lead to sexual development disorders or infertility. Testicles grown in the laboratory, even though they are from mice, can significantly help in understanding the mechanisms related to sex determination and provide clues to solving the problem of infertility, which affects 1 in 12 men. Dr. Nitsan Gonen, who led the study, and his team created testicular organoids from testicular cells taken from newborn mice. An attempt to grow organoids from adult mouse cells was unsuccessful. The organoids were cultured in vitro for nine weeks. After this time, researchers identified seminiferous tubules in them. The organoid cells were also organized very similarly to natural nuclei. Nine weeks of development, as scientists indicate, is sufficient time for organoids to produce sperm and hormones. In mice, it takes about 34 days to mature to this point. So researchers believe that the relatively long lifespan of the organoids may allow these processes to occur in them as well. It is currently unknown whether the existing model will actually produce sperm, but the team has already noticed signs of the beginning of meiosis, the process by which gametes, i.e. reproductive cells, sperm or eggs, in this case the former, are formed. The authors of the study also drew attention to the development of Sertoli cells, which support the processes of spermatogenesis and play a key role in sperm production. They found that after nine weeks of development, the cells closely resembled those seen in living mice at the corresponding stages of development. Organoids usually resemble organs in the embryonic stage. In this case, researchers created conditions that allowed them to develop to a more mature state and showed that testes grown from embryonic cells could develop. These organoids are a promising model for basic research on the development and function of the testes which can be translated into therapeutic applications in the treatment of disorders of sexual development and infertility, explains Dr. Gonen. In the future, the team plans to grow testicular organoids from human cells.